everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today on this workshop, Understanding Your Numbers, A1C, CGMs, and Blood Sugar Basics. My name's Alicia Downs, and I'm a Certified Diabetes Care and Education Specialist. I'm also a person with diabetes. Today, we're going to dive into some of the key numbers involved in managing our diabetes. A1C, glucose levels, and continuous monitoring, or CGM data. My goal is to help you understand that these numbers, they mean something, and how to interpret them and how to use that information to improve your daily care. We've also provided downloadable guide to understanding your blood sugar patterns that you can use to make sense of common blood sugar trends. This guide will help serve as a reference to interpret your own data and prepare questions for your healthcare team. Definitely print it out or save it as a PDF and check it out, make reference to it, go back to it again and again. It's super helpful. Before we begin, Please note, nothing stated today is intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Our discussion is for informational purposes only. Always seek advice from your healthcare provider or any specific medical conditions. And let's get started. Let's start with the big one, A1C, which you've probably heard of many times. A1C is a blood test that reflects your average blood sugar levels over the past roughly three months. It's a big picture metric. It helps you and your healthcare team see how your diabetes is being controlled over time. Uh, generally, we're looking for an A1C under seven for most adults with diabetes, but your target may vary. However, that average three months gets a little skewed. It can be kind of frustrating. The most recent month weighs in a little bit more than the previous two. So if you got your A1C done after a time of illness or steroids or um, just less than stellar management, your A1C might skew higher than you expect. Um, it also changes depending on how fast your red blood cell turnover is. Average red blood cell turnover is about three months. So think of it like this. Uh, if you've got a tennis ball, a sticky ball on the end of a string, and you spin it around in the air for three minutes, and then check how much dust is on that ball, you get the average amount of dust in the air represented as the amount of dust on the ball. But if the ball only spins for two minutes because red blood cell turnover is accelerated by maybe being on certain medications that stimulate red blood cell growth, you're going to get a number that's smaller but doesn't actually represent the dust in the air anymore. Likewise, if you keep that ball spinning for four or five minutes, that number is going to be higher but it doesn't mean there's more dust in the air. It just means the ball was spinning longer to collect more dust. That often happens if red blood cell turnover is slower. For uh, example, in advanced age, um, if someone has uh, certain kidney problems or anemia. So some populations won't get an accurate A1C. There are genetic variations. Uh, some ethnicities aren't as accurately captured. So if what you're expecting from your A1C isn't what you're seeing on the number, ask your doctor to consult your continuous glucose monitor data in place of your CGM or to do a substitution test called a fructosamine test. That tests your average blood sugar over roughly the past six weeks based on a protein in your blood that is not red blood cell turnover dependent. So it can give a clearer number. Sometimes it doesn't matter much. It's just a metric, a single number in a bigger picture. Sometimes it can matter a lot. It could be a determining factor in whether we get life insurance, whether we're able to be a commercial driver, um, you know, how much things cost in our world. So it can be a, a deal breaker for some things. When it comes to daily glucose levels, we look at specific targets like 
fasting, pre-meal and post-meal glucose. These readings help us understand the effects of food, activity, medication on blood sugar throughout the day. And then there's CGM data, which shows us real-time blood sugar levels moment to moment. This is where we can see real trends and patterns, how your blood sugar responds to not just meals and meds, but stress, metabolics, a poor night's sleep. Your CGM's time and rain feature tells you the percentage of time that your blood sugar stays in your personalized target range, which can be incredibly helpful for daily adjustments. You can have a great A1C that's made of largely very high blood sugars and very low blood sugars. That's not healthy. But a great time in range, even if it means a little higher A1C, that's a key to wellness. So now that we know what some of these numbers represent, let's talk about how to use them for day-to-day -day blood sugar management. Blood sugar changes all the time. So learning to interpret your own patterns can make it easier to anticipate those fluctuations. For example, exercise often lowers blood sugar, but it depends on the activity type. High intensity workouts, or what we call anaerobic workouts, actually often cause an initial spike in blood sugar. Knowing this can help you prepare, whether that means adjusting a pre-workout snack or timing your medications differently. If you're eating out, hidden sugars and fat content and restaurant foods can make blood sugar management a lot more challenging. But having a CGM and that data can help you monitor and respond to those changes after meals. Again, you can plan better next time. In your downloadable guide, we've included sections on recognizing common patterns like morning highs or evening lows, along with tips on how to adjust meals, activities, and your medications to address exactly those patterns. Partnering with your healthcare team is key to effective diabetes management. Before your appointments, review your blood sugar patterns using the guide. A couple of weeks worth of data is plenty. If you tr try to go back a month, you're getting too much information. It's more than the brain can handle, and you're probably not metabolically who you were a month ago, and who can remember what they ate a week ago, let alone a month ago. Two weeks of data is more than enough. This way, you can highlight specific trends like frequent highs or lows and bring those details to your provider's attention. During your appointment, ask questions that help you understand your data better. For instance, if you're seeing morning highs, discuss what are potential adjustments to my nighttime routine that can help me adjust address these morning highs. Sharing specific data points makes it easier for your provider to help you fine tune your treatment plan. Your goals may not be their goals. Your provider might be trying to reduce your highs, not seeing two or three lows a week as a problem. For you, those lows could be extremely stressful or really inhibiting your performance academically, athletically, socially, or professionally. And so, letting them know this is the trend that I'm seeing and need to address it really is going to help you reach your goals. Remember, your healthcare team is there to support you, and sharing your numbers makes it easier for them to offer that personalized guidance. So let's take a look at the downloadable guide to understanding your blood sugar patterns. This guide provides a breakdown of common trends and practical tips for interpreting your data. For example, if you notice frequent post-meal spikes, the guide suggests specific meal adjustments or medication timing strategies to help. The guide also includes questions you might want to discuss with your provider, like whether your target range should be adjusted or if your insulin timing is optimal. Using this guide consistently can help you better understand your own patterns and become more confident in managing your blood sugar. Now, I always like to point out, 
the difference between a pattern and an outlier. If something is happening more than 50% of the time at the same time of day, that's a pattern. It probably has something to do with your routine, your medication, uh, the ratios or the settings in your technology, your insulin pump, or the ratios of your injections or doses of your medication. If it happens less than 50% of the time, now it's something that's probably more of a human factor, like meal splurges, irregular activity patterns, stress, poor sleep, things that are probably going to be pretty hard for our doctor to figure out unless we come in with our diary. If it happens less than 25% of the time, those are just kind of the foibles of life. It may well be a thing that might take multiple visits uh, to, to figure out what's going on. Your doctor might give you a list of four or five things that it could be and ask you to keep an eye on them. We tend as humans to spot outliers. We spot the one time in a week that our blood sugar went really high. And that's what we want to talk about because it bothers us. Or the one time in the month that we had a bad low. And that's what we were most want to address because it was scary. It definitely was scary. And we should address it probably from a mental health standpoint so that we can deal with the trauma and, and the fear and the anxiety and move forward in a healthy way. But from a blood sugar management standpoint, it's an extreme outlier. And what we're really looking at is the 70 to 80% of our life really getting that dialed in and finding the patterns there. Before we wrap up, let's go over a few key takeaways. First, understanding your A1C and daily glucose level empowers you to make informed choices. Each metric, whether A1C, fasting glucose, time and range, it offers insights into different aspects of your diabetes management. Second, identifying patterns in your data helps you respond proactively, whether it's adjusting your exercise, your routines, planning meals, or discussing options with your healthcare team. And don't forget to use that guide to understanding your blood sugar patterns. It may seem confusing and daunting at first. So was learning your colors. But after time, we got a grasp on it. Same thing with blood sugar patterns. Over time, it'll serve as a really helpful resource along your path. Thank you for spending this time with me. I hope you've gained new insights that'll make managing your diabetes a little easier. As we close, I want to encourage you to check out additional resources available through Byram Healthcare. We're here to support you in all aspects of diabetes management. If you have questions after this session, please feel free to reach out or connect with us on social media. Remember, nothing stated today is intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Our discussion is to be informative and for informational purposes only. Always seek advice from your healthcare provider for any specific medical conditions. Thank you again for joining me. Be sure to download your guide, start tracking, and understanding your own blood sugar patterns. Take care and remember, every step toward better understanding is a step toward better health.